Welcome to the module 3 of our series on sequence stratigraphic principles. In this module, we're looking at correlative conformities, uh, conformable successions, and shoreline movements. Now, when we say correlative conformity, um, what do we mean? Right? So, the two things here, correlative means similar or same or equal in age, and conformity means in the same natural sequence. So, if we have two items, uh, one and two, right, or A and B. We're saying if we're saying A and B are in conformity, that means after A comes B, or after one comes two, there is nothing in the middle. That means there's nothing missing between the two of them. Now, applying that to its usage in sequence stratigraphy, um, we have uh, the, the a surface up deep, which is usually a sequence boundary. Right, and that's easy to identify. And all the way down deep, it can be tough to identify that sequence boundary. Right. So correlative conformity here refers to a down deep um, surface or interface, usually a flooding surface. Right. That is an equivalent of the sequence boundary in the up deep areas. That means that both the sequence boundary we see on the up deep area, and that's. Uh, surface in the down deep area they are actually the same in age in fact you can actually trace one of them continuously up to the other okay All right so this uh, that's what we have in this section so we're seeing here that uh, in the up deep area at point a we see a sub aerial erosive unconformity um right we're saying that we can trace that all the way down. That's a red line all the way down. By the time you get to the basement area, it is not erosive. It's actually become a flooding surface. So that point B is the correlative conformity to the up deep sub aerial uh, unconformity or sequence boundaries. Like saying we're tracing from a, a sequence boundary at point A. By the time we're getting to point B, it becomes a flooding surface. So that's that's the whole idea of um, correlative um conformity they, they, we're just saying they are about the same in age one it's actually the same as the other but the expression is different okay now when we say relatively conformable again what do we um, mean so this is where uh, walter's law coming um like we said earlier on a rock succession or a rock uh, strata is said to be conformable if there is nothing missing between you know the individual beds or the individual uh, unit. That means one of them is naturally uh, close to the other in the environment of deposition. So in the next slide, uh, we see more on Walter's law, which says that lithologies that conform that lie uh, conformably on top of one on top of the other must have come from environments of deposition that are side by side or near to each other. And that also means, again, another way to put it says a vertical succession of fascists reflect lateral changes in environments. This well log shows uh, an example of vertical succession of environments of deposition. So here we have the upper shore phase interval uh, right at the shallowest uh, section and uh, right below it we have the lower shore phase uh, fascias and the offshore fascias at the basal section. Now if we um, you know project this to the uh, bathymetric section shown here, um, we see that we have the the shore phase as the upper and lower shore phase just side by side to each other, and the right uh, um, to the side of the lower shore phase we have the offshore mode, and which is kind of expected. So the idea of uh, you know conformable uh, successions and genetically related succession is saying as we go from one environment to the other, we expect a gradual transition and um, such that one of the, each of the environments uh, successively are expected to be laterally, um, you know, in, in close to each other, so from one uh, to the other. All right, so let's uh, look at shoreline movements. Um, well, first of all, this is uh, a global sea level curve. It just shows us the uh, sea level changes uh, for the last, um, well, about 500 million years ago, um, which which uh, tells us from what we see here that the sea level has fluctuated uh, between 120 and 200 meters, you know, relative to the current day sea level. 
So let's uh, look at just a bit of exercise on how uh, the sea level actually changes or actually rises and falls. So supposing we have um, an observer, um, right, a fun man <laughs> sitting at the beach and uh, just observing the shoreline positions uh, through time. So supposing that at uh, the first episode or the first uh, phase of um, sea level change, the shoreline moves from point A to B and then back to C. So here we see that from A to B is one step forward. That's one step in the landward direction. And then B to C is three steps uh, in the basinward direction. So in this first episode, we have one step backward, forward, and three steps, uh, three steps backward. And in the next episode, supposing the shoreline now moves from where it was uh, in the previous um, uh, movement. So in this case, it starts from point C, moves two steps to A, and then moves five, step, uh, five steps back to D, to point D. So that means, in effect, the shoreline has, has made a net, you know, basin world movement. And then supposing that continues, uh, and we have a third episode, uh, in, in which case three steps forward and seven steps backward from D to C to E. So what this is saying is that the shoreline has gone from point A to B, from B to C, and then from C back to A to D, and all the way, you know, continues the movement, and then it finally lands at um, the position E. And uh, so that means that this is what the shoreline has done. Even though each time it moves, uh, even though there are occasional um, landward movements, we see that the land, the, the shoreline has made a net, you know, basinward uh, movement. So overall, we see that the relative sea level has fallen, uh, which in, which is because the net shoreline position shows that it has moved further seawards. Okay, um, thank you for listening. This is what I have for now. Uh, in the in the coming um, um, modules, we'll be talking more on bounding surfaces. Uh, sequences and depositional uh, apparatus sequences, um, system structs, and uh, all 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 other uh, necessary terminologies.